Hey everybody, I am in my new makeshift office that I just converted a bedroom into an office, all my stuffed animals. Here are my boys that are gonna help me with the lesson today. Raffi stole one of my stuffed animals. Raffers, did you steal my stuffed animal? So it should be in shreds shortly. And there's Roscoe. So they're gonna help me today. Um, I'm not sure how much help they'll be. So my plan for today is to go over what exponents are and what they aren't, because some of us are struggling with that still, okay? So let me get my phone straight. So I kind of started this and forgot to hit record again, so we're gonna start over, okay? So what an exponent is, and I need you to listen because some of you are still getting this wrong and that's okay, we're just, we're learning it. All right, what it says is an exponent. Two to the fourth power is an exponent. That's how I say that, two to the fourth power, okay? What it does not mean is two times four. That's why I wrote it down and crossed it out. It does not, that is not eight, okay? I do not just, it's not that easy. You don't just do two times eight. So what it does mean is that I have a base number and I have an exponent. This is my base number. This is my exponent, okay? Now my base number is the number I multiply. I never multiply a four. I don't multiply that number. I multiply two by two by two, however many times, okay? My exponent tells me how many times. So this is the number of times I'm gonna multiply the base by itself. Base by itself. Number of times, not times, okay? Number of times. So what that really means is my base number is two. I wanna multiply it by itself four times. So I have one, two, three, four twos, and I'm gonna multiply them out. If I did two times four, it's like doing two plus two plus two. This is an addition, okay? Um, so it's multiplication. So what you do is you multiply two at a time, always with exponents. Two times two is four. Then I brought down another two, that's eight. And then I multiply by another two, that's 16. You're never adding, like ever adding. <laughs> Roscoe wants out of the room, so give me one second. Okay, goodbye. Um, apparently he doesn't want to learn exponents. So you guys just got to be very careful. So let's do one other example. If I have, um, let's say I have three to the fifth power. Okay. It looks like it would be an easy problem. Go away, you two. But you got to write it out. Okay. You would do three times three times three times three times three. My base number number of times is my exponent, one, two, three, four, five. They multiply out very, very quickly, okay? So this isn't gonna be a small number. Three times three is nine, and then if I brought down this three, that gives me 27, and if I bring down this three, that gives me 81, and I bring down this three, that gives me 243. So three to the fifth power, oops, I forgot my three, is equal to 243, okay? Not 15, I'm not saying five threes, I'm saying three times three, five times, okay? So think about that exponent means, if something says it grows exponentially, that means that it multiplies very quickly, okay? So that's what exponents do, that you multiply the number by itself, they're not that hard, you just gotta know what to do, okay? The other things I wanna go over with exponents are the different forms. Okay, so oh, Raffi bit my pen here, so this is called exponential form. It is written with a base and an exponent, okay? That's exponential form. That's all that means. It means it's written as an exponent. It literally has the word exponent in it, okay? This right here, is expanded form. It means I took this number and expanded it out, okay? Okay, so that's what expanded form means. It literally means you multiplied it out. And then your last one is standard form. That means what is the answer? Okay? So that's how exponents work. 
All right. Now, what I want to go through is something like to the first power or to the zero power. And I want to show you why it's what it is. Okay. So let's say I stick with twos. I'm going to stick with twos because those are pretty easy to do. Okay. So let's say I have two to the fourth power. We know what that is. We just did it. Two to the third power, two to the second power, two to the first power, and two to the zero power. So those are the ones we're going to do right now. So we should know by now that this means two, I'm going to use a dot for times, times two, times two, times two, okay? Two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16. We just did that one up top, right? All right, that means that two to the third power means I have three twos. So two, I'm going to multiply it three times, not three twos. I'm going to multiply two by itself three times. Two times two is four, four times two is eight. Okay, you should see a pattern here. Two squared, or two to the second power, this can also be called two squared. Okay, that means the same as two to the second power if you square something like area. Remember this is cubed. This could also be called two cubed. Put that in there, okay? Cube means like volume where you have stuff to the third power. All right, so 2 squared, or 2 to the second power, is 2 times 2, which we know is 4. All right, hopefully we're seeing a pattern. Um, if I did 16 divided by 2, I got 8. If I did 8 divided by 2, I got 4. That means my next one should be 2. So 2 to the first power means there's literally 1, 2, which is 2. Okay, here is why 2 to the 0 power is 1, not 0. Okay, if I take 2 and divide it by 2, so you know each time we divide it by 2, right, to get to the next one, divide by 2, so there's a pattern to all math, pretty much. If I divide by 2, what is 2 divided by 2? Two? 2 divided by 2 is 1, so this follows the pattern, okay? So that's why 2 to the 0 power is 1 and not 0, okay? Now, anything to the 0 power is one. Any number, it's gonna follow that pattern. If I did threes, I would divide by three, divide by three. That would have been a three, divided by three gives me one. So any number to the zero power is one. That is very important. Okay, to the power zero is equal to one. Doesn't matter what number it is. If I have five to the zero power, it's gonna equal one. If I have 100 to the zero power, it's gonna equal one, okay? So any number to the first power just means there's one of them, one, two. But if it's to the zero power, it is always one, okay? Always one. All right, so hopefully that'll help with exponents a little bit, okay? Going over the different forms of exponents. All right, the other thing I wanna go over that we did a little bit of, but not a ton of, but it was still in the homework stuff because it has exponents in it, is order of operations, okay? So, I'm gonna go on this side. When you do order of operations, I'll put that up there, hopefully. Okay, so I'm gonna write that out. You always follow order of operations, not just when we're doing order of operation problems, you're always following order of operations. That's what messes a lot of kids up on tests. Always follow this. And I see some sometimes on Facebook or some of the other social medias where they put problems up and people as adults still don't follow the order of operations. They'll be like, what is the answer to this problem? And you'd be surprised how many people are getting it wrong. Okay, so always follow that. All right, remember it's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Please excuse. Now, my and dear, PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally is kind of how I learned it. Okay, they're not five different, or they're not six different steps. They are four different steps, okay? It just depends. So the P stands for parentheses. I don't know if I spelled that right. I think that's an E-N, okay? Parentheses, you always do what's in parentheses first. So you do what's in parentheses first. Always, okay? 
Now, if there's exponents or something inside of your parentheses, you follow order of operations inside the parentheses, okay? So you're always following order of operations. Now your E is your exponents, like we just learned. Okay, that is what you do second. Okay, so powers go second. If there's no parentheses, then powers go first, okay? So this is always the first thing you do. This is always the second thing you look for. Now, this is your third thing, and that's your fourth thing. <coughs> Excuse me, I need some water. All right, now, MD stands for multiply, divide. You do it in the order it is in the problem. It's not multiplication first, division second. It's multiply or divide whatever comes first in the problem, okay? And this is whatever's first in the problem. So once I've done my addition or my um, parentheses and exponents, <coughs> excuse me, you do what's ever first in the problem. So if division came before multiplication, I'm going to do the division first. If multiplication comes before division, I'm going to do the multiplication first. And then the last step, the fourth step, is your addition or subtraction. And then bigger arrow. And again, that's whatever comes first in the problem. That'll always be your last step. Your addition and subtraction is always your last step. It just depends on did the addition come first or did the subtraction come first in the problem. Okay. So again, whatever comes first in the problem. Okay, so let's do a couple examples. Let's say that I have five plus, and I probably need to scoot that over for a second, five plus 13 minus five squared. All right, now, when I look at this problem, the first thing I'm gonna look for is parentheses. Okay, I have parentheses and I have an exponent. Now, here's the, the, here's the important part. The exponent is outside of the parentheses. So I'm gonna do what's inside first. It always helps to underline your stop, rewrite the problem. If you do it systematically, they're really hard to get wrong, okay? So I would do five plus 13 minus five is eight, but I want that to the second power, okay? So I did my first step, I did my parentheses. I don't have any more parentheses in my problem. So I'm gonna go on to exponents. Do I have any exponents? I do, right there. So I would solve that. This would be five plus, this is eight times eight, remember? Okay, I'm gonna put it in parentheses just so we know what it was, which is really five plus 64. So all I did is kind of multiply it out. I would do that in my head, that part, but I'm just showing you what I'm doing. All I have left is addition. And when I get to my last step, I should just have, if there's an addition or subtraction, one or the other left. So five plus 64 is 69, okay? So that's one problem. Let's try another one. I'm gonna scoot that bugger over. All right, so this one, let's say that I have 18 divided by nine times three minus three, okay? All right, I'm gonna look for parentheses. I don't have any. I'm gonna look for exponents. I don't have any. So I go on to step three. Step three would be multiply or divide whatever comes first. If I multiply this out, I can't do this problem, okay? It has to be this part. So I would do 18 divided by nine is two, then just rewrite everything else, times three minus three, okay? You do wanna go one step at a time. I still do it this way, okay? I don't try to do it in my head. Two times three, now I'm gonna do multiplication. I had both division and multiplication in that problem, so I'm still on my step three, okay? I have to do all my multiplication and division. So this would be six minus three, okay? And then my last step would be six minus three is three. All right, the other thing I wanna go over is what happens if I have something in parentheses, okay? So let's say I've got this, I'm making up this problem as we go, so hopefully it'll work. Let's say that I've got 50 minus three minus, not three, let's do 13, minus two squared. And then, um, 
divided by four. <laughs> Let's hope this works. <laughs> I'm not sure because I'm doing it trying to figure it out. All right, so that is so not gonna work. Divided by four is not gonna work. Maybe. How about we make it divided by three? Change my mind. We're gonna make that a three, sorry. That'll work. All right, so I'm gonna do my, now I got parentheses, so I have to do the parentheses first, but now I have an exponent in my parentheses, okay? So I'm gonna kinda treat that like a totally separate problem first, solve everything in that parentheses, and then I'm gonna move on. So what I really need to do first is this, okay? As I'm following order of operations inside my parentheses. So I'm gonna do, rewrite it, 50 minus. Now I'm gonna keep my parentheses because I'm doing this, 13 minus two squared is four, divided by three, okay? So I did do my parentheses first, I just haven't finished it yet, okay? So now I'm gonna do my next step, which would be the rest of the parentheses. 50 minus 13 minus four is nine, divided by three. All right, now comes the part where most people make the mistake. This is, it sounds silly, but this is where most of you may. You gotta divide before you can subtract. So this would be 50 minus nine divided by three is three. My answer is gonna be 47, okay? So that gave us kind of an overall on um, exponents and order of operations. So I hope this helps you. Um, we're gonna be moving on tomorrow to integers. Make sure you're watching the videos I make. Um, I try to make them as short as possible so that I keep your interest a little bit, but also um, keep up with the homework as we're going along because some of you are falling behind and then it's a lot to do, okay? I try to space it out for you every day, but today you just have um, two games to do and there's a link to them on the remote learning page. So I will talk to you guys later. I hope you had a fabulous break. See you tomorrow.